Thanks for listening to the Mornings with Carmen LaBerge podcast, made available thanks to support from listeners just like you. Your daily encouragement that God has the world in the hollow of his hand. This is Mornings with Carmen LaBerge on Faith Radio. If we're gonna fly, we fly like eagles, arms out wide. If we're gonna fear, we fear no evil. We will rise by your power. We will go by your spirit. We are bold. If we're gonna stand, we stand as giants. If we're gonna walk, we walk as lions. Well, again. I'm Paul filling in for Carmen. Mornings without Carmen. One more day. Uh, Carmen returns on Monday here on Faith Radio. And I've enjoyed my time this week with you and hope for one more good hour before we uh, hand things back over to Carmen on Monday. Okay, have you seen The Chosen? I mean, not just watched it on your on home, at home or such, but in the theaters. Okay, as Chosen Season 4 continues its theatrical run, I saw this at churchleaders.com, but... Uh, As it continues its theatrical run, the show's team is surprised by new numbers about who is watching this popular show about the life of Jesus. Only about half of the viewers are of this Bible-based dramatic series are practicing Christians or cultural Christians, according to Catherine Warnock, who's the Chosen's vice president of original content. The other half are either curious about Christianity or have no Christian faith at all. And she says, we are deeply surprised by that. Speaking recently to Christian headlines about the survey of her team conductor, Warnock also uh, highlighted interesting insights about the viewership's age as well. A lot of younger people are checking in on this depiction of Jesus. Now, hopefully, as you engage these people who have been watching it, you have an inroad to talk to them about, about Jesus yourself. So, Don't miss out on the opportunity here. I asked a little while ago, and you can still respond, what is your favorite old hymn? I mean, the older the better. 877-933-2484. Jim says, well, I kind of like them all, but on Christ the Solid Rock I Stand is one of my favorites. And, And Mary, I get it. How do you choose a favorite? There's so many great hymns, but... Her life hymn is Great Is Thy Faithfulness. A couple of great hymns. Why am I asking that? Because while filming a new music documentary called The First Hymn Project, historian and former pop singer John Dixon had a few spine-tingling moments. We've had John on our show before. He's got some books out. He's also got a podcast called Undeceptions. You can find out more about this at undeceptions.com slash the first hymn project. But getting back to those those little spine-tingling moments. One was taking a film crew to an archaeological site in Egypt where an 1,800-year-old hymn was discovered beneath the sands of time on a piece of uh, parchment called P. Oxy 1786. It was uncovered in the ruins of the Egyptian city of Oxyrhynchus. Specialists were stunned to discover that it contained words to the oldest Christian hymn outside the Bible, that is, that's ever been found. Yes, we have the Psalms, and then there's also some poems, possibly hymns. Paul has a few of them in his New Testament writings. I mean, I like the what in, in Philippians chapter 2 is what's considered the Carmen Christi, the Song of Christ, who being very nature, God, you know, if you read that section in, in uh, Philippians chapter 2, that was probably an early hymn of the church. Well, outside of the Bible, though, This is what is interesting, not just the lyric, but actually music. For the first time, the world could see or could know what these ancient believers were singing about and actually hear what it sounds like. Dixon traced the history of P. Oxy 1786 from its ancient resting place in Oxford in this documentary he's putting together, or rather in Egypt, to Oxford University where it was stored, and then its journey to Australia and to the U.S. as two musicians are seeking to resurrect this song into a moder- or for the modern church. And, you know, for a rock fans such as Dixon, who I didn't know he was a pop singer at one time. That's kind of cool. Um, another spine-tingling moment for him was being in studio in Nashville, with Ben Fielding and Chris Tomlin, a couple of major musical hit makers as far as Christian music is concerned. And they're, they brought the song together as an amazing anthemic congregational praise song. 
Okay, getting back to what is written on that parchment, dating back to the mid-200s A.D., this hymn is one of the earliest known manuscripts for a Christian hymn, complete with the squiggles that are the musical notes that unlock the melody. The fascinating thing is that these four lines of ancient texts include an idea that some have claimed early Christians didn't believe. Here's what the lyric says in, in part. The lyric says, calls on all creation to be silent as we sing our hymn to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the only giver of all good things. Amen. Amen. This was, again, mid or early, early 200s A.D., about two generations before the Council of Nicaea. This is the doctrine of the Trinity, the Christian idea that the one God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you sometimes hear that the, that idea was only invented much later, say, like in 325, 100 years later at the Council of Nicaea. No. As Dixon, again, a historic historian, said, this is interesting. This song predates any of the de- denominations and the Council of Nicaea. It was in the middle of the third century, so no Roman Catholic church existed, no Greek Orthodox church or Orthodox church. Obviously, no Protestant churches existed. It was before all that. The lyrics are completely theologically down the line praising the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the giver of all good gifts. And so they look forward to giving the song back to the church. It just feels right, he says. So next month, if I read this correctly, Chris Tomlin, Ben Fielding, they'll have engineers and producers in uh, to start working to record this. There'll be an Egyptian female singer who will lay down a backing track, and the con- and there's going to be a concert around the song that'll be filmed as part of this, the first project, uh, first hymn project documentary, and the song should be on Chris Tomlin's next CD or project album, call you one. I know a lot of us don't have CDs anymore. And it'll just be called the first hymn, and it's slated for release early next year, so who knows, by Easter Next year, we could be singing the first hymn. Kind of looking forward to that. That sounds really cool. Well, this again is Mornings with Carmen. Just without Carmen, I'm Paul. And joining us next, well, Adam Holtz. And, okay, maybe you've been anxious to get those new augmented reality visors, those goggles, the Apple Pro Vision Pro thinking, wow, how cool. Now, before you uh, put down the $3,500 for the pair of goggles, Adam Holtz has some caveats for you before you, uh, beyond the sticker shock. (laughs) $3,500 for visors? Anyway, this is Mornings with Carmen on Faith Radio. Okay, people still commenting about what they uh, really, really like with peanut butter, their favorite peanut butter, crunchy, creamy. I'm a creamy guy. It's National Peanut Butter Day. Adam Holtz from Plugged In. Are you a peanut butter guy? And if so, which? Yeah, creamy. I I don't want that. Yes! Here's my my reason. Okay, okay. If if you put butter on first, which is the way the Lord intended. (laughs) No, um, I'm not one of those. (laughs) No, you got to have the butter first. It's important. All right. It's a base layer. But so the bread gets a little bit, you know, soggy, moist, pick your adjective, right? Mm-hmm. And then those little chunks of peanuts, you try to spread them and it just tears the toast up. Good it's point. Just a mess. Good it's point. A mess. It's so you know, why yeah. do I it's like eating sandpaper. I don't I don't need that. <laughs> okay, no sandpaper uh Okay. No sandpaper. <laughs> no sandpaper with jelly. Okay, got it. No, exactly. All right. Well, let's talk about the stuff that is important. After all, you had uh, plugged in. You like to shine the shine a light on the world of popular entertainment while giving yep. us, our families, essential tools needed to understand, navigate, and impact the culture in which we live. And one of the big things that's been talked about recently has to do with Apple Vision Pro. It, it's a new... Yep. Is it? It's not a VR goggle per se. It's more of an augmented reality. Yeah, I mean they're calling them VR headsets, and I mean it sort of splits the difference. They're actually coming up with new phrases to describe what this thing is. They're calling it spatial computing mm-hmm. uh, or pass through computing, and that's because unlike you know, VR as we have had them so far. Like we have a VR headset for our Sony PlayStation 4. And honestly, 
it's pretty mind boggling because it, it really is immersive and mm-hmm. it, it tricks your brain into thinking that it's somewhere that it's not. And I remember the first time I put one on, I'm like, wow, this is pretty amazing. And it almost instantly made me sick to my stomach. Mm. So, and, and with the Apple VR, what you have is uh, you have a VR headset, but it's got a bunch of cameras on it too. So you're not, you're not looking through, but you can get an image of what's in front of you. So it's, you know, it's sort of a digital projection projection of what you would have seen. And you can use your hands to, you know, pull menus down and do various kinds of computing that you might do with a smartphone. Um, and okay. so I think the the sci-fi kind of goal is you put this headset on and you wear it all the time and it becomes a replacement for having a phone in your hand because you can just, you know, wander around with this headset on making gestures and everybody will think you're crazy, but you'll think you're pretty cool. <laughs> well, the, the reality is that our brains are not wired to wear a digital headset all the time. And so you end up having... Uh, depth perception, you know, depth perception issues. You end up having that nausea, and there's an acclimation period both directions, both putting mm. it on and taking it off. That so, was the interesting part because the San- yeah. the uh, Stanford researchers doing it, they said the longer you use it, your adjustments, you would think it, yeah. you, you get used to it, and you'd be able to jump back and forth. Uh uh-uh. uh well, and I, I would liken it in a very, very crude sense. If you have ever worn glasses, when you get a new prescription, it takes time to acclimate to that. You Especially know? when you go to pro- uh, progressives, folks. And, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the progressives, I mean, uh-huh. I went to progressives about 10 years ago, and just going upstairs became yeah. this, you know, this exercise in, am I going to make it or not? And even now... Every now and then I'll miss a step and I'll be like, I think it's because of my progressive lenses. Mm -hmm. You know, it can't, it can't be because of my advanced age. No, 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 no. (laughs) Um, But when you're talking about your eyes, God designed your eyes to take in the world around you. So it stands to reason that when you drop a, you know, a virtual representation on a screen in front of your eyes, um, that could be a problem. And, the one thing that this article didn't talk about that I have to just wonder about is you got a lot of electricity and potentially radiation, you know, zipping mm. around up there too. And what's it going to be like, even if you didn't have those acclimation problems for your long-term eye health to have, you know, a bunch of pixels an inch from your eyes. It doesn't feel healthy to me. No, it doesn't. Well, again, we're talking with Adam Holt from Plugged In. And another thing that was in your recent, some of your recent blogs has to do with a, uh, with an app called Wiz. It yeah. was taken off of Apple and Google. Now it's back. Yep. Okay. Tell yeah, us about it. You know, Wiz is an app that was supposed to give teens the ability to connect with their friends, which frankly, that description is so generic i'm like well how is that different than snapchat or instagram or be real or any of the other zillion you know connection apps out there but the national center on on sexual exploitation um felt like this was an app that was closer to tinder and you know it's which is a dating app and that it potentially enabled those who want to exploit children in ways that your standard social media doesn't. So it, they took it off Apple. They took it off Google for a while. The company said, no, 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 that's not what we intended at all. Totally safe for children, you know, load it back up again. And Apple has reloaded it. Google has not mm. uh, because there are those questions. of what. Uh, Uh, well, we seem to have lost Adam there for a little bit. We'll try and reconnect with him. And as we continue our conversation uh, about things like go. Wiz and... Are you there, Adam? Yeah. Okay, you, you, you kind of disappeared on us for a moment there. But you were, you were talking again about Wiz and the exploitation and, you know... Anyway, long story short, let's kind of bottom line it for parents yeah. when it comes to this. Well, well, the bottom line is anytime you've got a social media app of any kind there's a potential for bad actors to get involved. 
right? And and you can't always know who you're interacting with. And so I think not only Wiz, but all of them, just the longer you can wait, the better. And setting those those boundaries and keeping communication lines clear about your expectations as a parent is really important. And, and even then, there's so much negative data about social media. Seriously, mm-hmm. wait as long as you possibly can. Right. I would agree with that. Well, we, we'll, we'll continue our conversation with Adam here in a bit. Of course, the big movie out this weekend is uh, Dune Part 2, which we'll talk about, plus Martin Scorsese. Now, I know a lot of us remember back in the 80s the whole thing with The Last Temptation of Christ. Now, Martin, he's been having, a, toward the end of his life here, he, he wants to do a good Life of Jesus production but he's pausing, and we're going to talk about that because it, you know, that's something all of us struggle with at one point or another. But uh, how to how to really understand Jesus, and we'll talk about that in just a few moments as we continue with uh, with uh, Adam Holtz from Plugged In here on Faith Radio. Anne texted me, and then we had a conversation on the phone. She's eighty six years old, and her husband Bob is ninety six. She listens to the podcast every single day, and she gets a lot of encouragement for her walk of faith in the midst of a life that has. Grown grown difficult and weary in many ways. Anne has a Faith Radio story, and so do you. If Faith Radio is a part of your daily journey with God, we'd love to hear your story. Share how God is using Faith Radio to encourage you and help you grow at MyFaithRadio.com. And who knows, maybe Anne will hear your story and be encouraged as well. All right, another idea for this National Peanut Butter Day. Um, have you heard of the Kiss Me Not sandwich? I'm Paul, and we're talking as well with uh, Adam Holt from Plugged In. He's not usually a culinary guy, but we're having fun talking a little bit about peanut butter. Uh, Adam, have you ever heard of the Kiss Me Not sandwich? No, but I mean, I was single till I was 34, so it feels <laughs> like maybe I was accidentally eating it and I didn't know. Okay, well, uh, let's see. Don texted in saying, "Yeah, um, my grand, my grandma had this. It was a favorite. What you okay. get? White bread, peanut butter, and sliced onions. Your thought on uh, that? No. <laughs> uh, full stop. I'm, I'm okay. Like, I just no. You don't mix vegetables and breakfast food. Well, no. T- I, now take okay." I mean, I, I guess, have, I guess omelets maybe, but yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I love my omelets, omelets. But okay, if you go to uh, some like African cultures, they use peanut butter as a base to a lot of their sauces, uh, uh-huh. and and then they do add the curry and garlic and onions okay, and stuff. So it actually right. it, it does work okay. But yeah, Paul, just straight up, you're, un- you you live in Minnesota and I live in Colorado. We're not in, and Africa. you're from Iowa. We're not, and I'm from Iowa. We're not doing this. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be trashing the person here. Okay, okay. I'm, well, I'm just, I am being silly, and I'm not an onion fan in general. Oh, so there you go. how could you not be? They're so good. Um, I'm just not. Okay, okay. Let's get back to talking about entertainment. And Martin Scorsese, um, we talked about this before, that he was working on a Life of Jesus project, a film, a movie, and now he's got it on pause and I, I was thinking about this because yesterday I was talk, we were talking with, um, with Sarah Zaustra from the Gospel Coalition, and there was a group of people that were working on some new uh, audio Bibles for Crossway, and they all of them were just kind of, okay, how do I say this right and, and speak it right? They were wrestling with what they had to see because instead of just reading it for themselves, they were, I have to read this for other people out loud, and it, it was life transformative but hard. I think yeah. Scorsese's got something else going on or something similar. Well, you know, I, I think that obviously you mentioned the last temptation of Christ, which caused an extraordinary outrage among evangelicals. I remember it. In what, the late 1990s? About 88, if I remember right. Yeah. Was it that early? Okay, my uh-huh. bad. Late 1980s. Um, Scorsese is, uh, is on record as being a, a reasonably intentional Catholic. And he's informed by his Catholic faith. Uh, And obviously he did silence a few years ago, which poses all sorts of interesting questions about, you know, if you're asked to denounce your faith for the purpose of saving somebody's life, would you do it? 
Um, and and it, it's a pretty interesting and pretty hard film to watch. Uh, so I, I think that on one hand, I'm willing to give Martin credit for, you know, he, he thinks about these things. And then he's got a whole list of films that are, you know, Wolf of Wall Street is probably that the one's most hard. Extreme, extreme movie I've ever seen. I mean, it, it it's just crazy. So I guess I, I will give him the benefit of the doubt here in the sense that he's not sure how to tell this story in a way that, you know, accomplishes, I guess, what he wants to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And frankly, um, even though they're very different, I think that the way that the chosen is telling Jesus story perhaps puts more pressure on him. You know, there's actually pretty good competition in the marketplace for a dramatic retelling of Jesus story. And I will say that uh, as of today, the last two episodes of season four, episodes seven and eight are in theaters. They've been releasing them in chunks. So this will be the last of season four, and then it'll be streaming in its entirety a little bit later this spring. And I, I don't think they've released details on that yet. Mm. Um, man, I, I, it got me. I watched both of those episodes yesterday and I just feel like uh, what Dallas Jenkins is doing is powerful. So you know, I, who knows if Martin Scorsese even knows that The Chosen exists? He True. probably does. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, telling the story of Jesus in a way that is fresh, is faithful. I don't know what his primary purpose is in telling it. Uh -huh. um, but uh, yeah, he's having second thoughts. I'm like, all right, I, that might be a good thing. <clears throat> I, you know, I would say pray for him, too, as he wrestles with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, if you're planning on going to the theaters this weekend, probably the big one is going to be Dune Part 2. And you saw it. And I, I was surprised. I mean, you text when we were emailing back and forth about what we're going to talk about today. You said probably the best movie you've seen in 20 years. Yeah, I think that Denis Villeneuve, who's a French Canadian, who is the director here, has really done something that from a, a cinematic perspective is in the same league as the Lord of the Rings films. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like Peter Jackson crafted those films as a labor of love. I, I really think that Denny Villeneuve is doing something similar. And I read an interesting article this week. He said he has been storyboarding this movie since he was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And there are so many scenes in this movie from a, a cinematography combined with the soundtrack um, perspective that just kind of blew my mind. Um, and as a professional movie reviewer, my mind doesn't get blown very often. That bar is pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, but just visually and storytelling wise and in terms of character development, I thought this was a stunning film. Now, it's also a PG-13 film. I'll take off my fanboy hat and put on my <laughs> plugged in hat. There is a lot of absolutely brutal violence here. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, I think, pushes the boundaries of of a PG-13 movie and what you can do with it. Um, and it's not an easy film to watch. Frank Herbert had a very nuanced perspective on religion, and religion plays a huge role here because the main character, Paul Atreides, is, uh, well, he's on this, this planet of Arrakis. They're fighting these bad guys called the Harkonnens, and there's a desert nomadic people called the Fremen who think he's their messiah. So there is a deep spiritual layer here. And, and Frank Herbert really sort of plums both what is the nature of true belief and how do people use religion to manipulate other people. And, and he kind of has observations on both of those things. So there's a ton to talk about. Um, I think the film is really, really well done. Um, and uh, I, I'm actually going to go see it again this weekend, and I don't I don't see movies twice very often, Paul. <laughs> All right, and just for just so people know, this originally again was a book, and there is a yes. um, I don't we call it a sequel. It's it is on your website, plugged in. You do book reviews as to uh, yep. you too, and just a few weeks ago, you guys put up Dune Messiah. And yep. Dune so, Messiah is the second book in the series, and very likely to become a movie as well. Oh, okay, okay. We yeah. got just a couple of moments here. Um, if you pull up your your Disney Plus account and maybe you want to watch that popular family movie, I love it. Mary Poppins, the original Dick Van Dyke, 
Julie yeah. Andrews. I mean, it's classic. It's it was yeah. a G-rated movie back in what 1966 when it came out. It's yep. no longer G-rated. Yeah, well, and it's no longer G-rated uh, in Great Britain. Oh, okay. Uh, the the British have it's about to be re-released. It actually, came out in '64, so there there's going to be a a 60th anniversary um, theatrical re-release. Oh, okay. At least in, at least in Great Britain, I'm not sure if that's happening here. And the uh, the British equivalent of the Motion Picture Association basically said, you know what, there are some there are some words used here that are um, basically racial slurs. And um, these are words that are so deep in the cultural woodwork that I had never even heard of them. One of them is hot and tots. Again, have you ever heard the word hot and tots? I well, in the movie, that, yeah. In the movie, right. But I did not know that that was a derogatory phrase for a South African people group. And uh. So. They have basically said this is something that, in retrospect, we need to be aware of. Um, and I'm of two minds, mm -hmm. you know. Cu cultural sensitivities change, which we I get. become aware that maybe there were some racial things baked in that we weren't even aware of at the time. I think it's fine to go back and ask the question, "Yeah, what do we think about that?" And on the other hand, it's like it's Mary Poppins. Can we receive it <laughs> as it was intended without having a big controversy about racial slurs here because that certainly was not what the intention was when the film was released yeah i was thinking they would peg it the british would peg it because i'm sorry i love dick van dyke but his british accent uh left a little <laughs> <to me. laughs> anyway, yeah yeah anyway hey adam thanks again for joining us here on mornings with carmen and keeping us updated about what's happening in the entertainment world and how we can apply it well in our lives you bet, Paul. We'll chat with you again next week. All right. This is Mornings with Carmen. I'm Paul filling in again today. Carmen back on Monday. Hey, question for you. If you could write your 10-year-old self a letter, what would you tell yourself? Would you tell yourself, okay, on that test in Ms. Martin's 11th grade lit class, when you have the option of answering one of two essays, uh, answer number two, not the first one. Or, hey, don't take that job with the XYZ widget company out of college. D don't go there. Now, if you're a fitness expert like Kim Dolan Leto, the author of Get Fit God's Way and the host of the Strong, Confident, His podcast, what would she tell herself, her 10-year-old self? She joins us next here on Mornings with Carmen on Faith Radio. Dear younger me, where do I start? If I could tell you everything that I have learned so far, then you could be one step ahead of all those painful memories still running through my head. I wonder how much different things would be, dear younger me. Maybe you know that song. Maybe you uh, listened to that one from Mercy Me. Kind of went through my head as I was looking at an article that uh, Car uh, that uh, Kim Dolan Leto had. Kim Dolan Leto, uh, the author of Fit, uh, Get Fit God's Way, joins us now, as she does every first Friday here on Faith Radio. Good morning, Kim. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on the show. And don't birthdays and, you know, they make you reflect, right? And what a good song that is. Like, don't you wish you could take all that you've learned and put it into your younger self? Well, I always dreamed about that. It'd be kind of cool. Now, I'm a, I'm a sci-fi kind of guy. I love my time travel type shows. And it'd be always interesting. Okay, if I can meet up with myself or send a note back to myself. Of course, then again, I kind of go, I probably went to listen to myself. So, <laughs> but that said, say I did. And you were thinking about this when you had your birthday just a few months ago. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people would do, like I was talking about before, okay, if in Mrs. Martin's lit class, don't answer that essay question. You had the option of the two, do the other one or something like that. Or don't take <laughs> that job out of college. That was a mistake or whatever. You took a different turn to this because, well, okay, first off, what got you on your birthday, you were ruminating about this and what was going through your mm -hmm. mind? I think that, you know, the way the world is, they, they can make, it can make you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm older now, you know, and, but age, you know, they say age is just a number, but I feel, you know, I, I turned 55 and I feel more alive than ever. And I think whether 
you're 50 or 90 or anywhere in between these life lessons that I've gathered over the years are like a compass pointing straight to Jesus. And I wanted to share five things that I learned. And I think it's really good for us at, you know, different stages in our life to check in and be like, wait a minute, you know, like number one says, if God isn't in it, you don't want it. I mean, isn't that great? Because it's sometimes we can get so caught up in the hustle and bustle of life and chasing at, chasing after things. I wrote that glitter, but may not be gold, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. If, if God isn't in it, you don't want it. If he's not the sinner, it's like building a house on sand. So we need to trust his plan, his will, and and his timing. And that's a hard one. But we need to remember, if God isn't in it, we don't want it. That's one I'm still struggling with. But Actually, I want to back up because you said something, Kim. You feel you feel more alive now than you did then, and I kind of go, okay. Mm-hmm. In, in some ways, I'm getting older. My body doesn't do everything it was able to do back at when I was young, 25 or whatever. And yet, because like you've been, you've been focusing on God, and you're letting God to, to renew your heart, even though the body's wasting away our spirits. God rejuvenates our spirits in wonderful ways. And he's been doing that, obviously, yes. for you. Yes. And you know what? I combine the two. Okay. So okay. I, I don't think it's an accident that they, you know, in the Bible, like one of the most understated things I've ever read is Jesus walked. Okay. Jesus walked. If you, I figured it out, like I, it's something like 64,000 steps at a time mm-hmm. with, with he and the disciples when they would travel. And when we walk with Jesus, there's something about that saying, don't we hear that all the time? Like, how's your walk with Jesus? Yeah. And sometimes just going for a literal walk in nature, talking to God is like the best therapy ever. And I, I love combining, you know, we walk by faith, not by sight and just being in an in exercise and some type of movement and worshiping God because it has brought me so much peace. And I think the world wants us to, you know, it, every, at every turn, our phones are endless. Uh, the, there's all these screens, the traffic, all of the, the pressure we have, the stress, it's overwhelming. So mm-hmm. I believe that God wants us to walk with him literally every day. <laughs> what is it? There's, there's some funny joke out there and I know I'm going to mess it up, but it says like, um, I, I exercise every day. I walk with Jesus and I think there's something literal as well, of course, it's obviously spiritual about doing that every step in him. And and it leads me to number two, which is if it costs you your peace, it's too expensive because our peace in Jesus, if we always go back to that and let peace be our compass and cast our cares on him, oh my goodness, it is a precious gift from him. So if something is, like God has put his finger on something and it's absolutely stealing your peace, it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. And there's so much that does steal our peace. I mean, you you brought mm-hmm. up the whole thing with, and I'm I'm really bad about this. Uh, I I don't want to say a doom scroll, but I do constantly check the news or I do constantly check stuff. And actually, during Lent, I've uh, moved, and I'm not you, at least on my phone using that to go to Facebook and stuff like that because I would get sucked into it and just. Uh, you know, it it would in the end steal my peace because I'm again comparing myself to others. You were talking about walking. I'm backing up again. I'm sorry, but have you ever heard the idea of the three, three mile an hour God? No. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to remember who who we talked to. This is a couple of years ago, but then there's other books out about that. But the idea that taking it slow with God, because when Jesus mm-hmm. was here, the average person, Jesus probably walked about three miles an hour. Mm-hmm. And in that time, in that slowness, having time with the Father, having time with his disciples, I mean, you got to think, you know, you only see what Jesus was saying most of the time at his, when he was del- delivering sermons. At least that's what you see in the Gospels. But mm-hmm. just how much of that was, how much was really, you know, him reiterating and just talking about life with his disciples as they were at three miles an hour going from one city to another? Yeah, that constant fellowship with him is how we need to do life. And that it's kind of funny because I'm going to share something that is like, as I've aged, I've learned, and and I don't know if, if this, I'm sure somebody else needs to hear this. I used, to, I, I started getting to this place where I was doing those HIIT workouts, like high intensity interval mm-hmm. training, jumping up and down. 
and was actually causing this, the cortisol in my body to rise. Mm. So I started doing something that's called zone two cardio, which I believe is the best cardio for weight and fat loss as we age, which is 70 to 80% of your heart rate. And that is right where Jesus was. It's like a three to four mile an hour walk. And it's, it's so good for you. And then if you take it in a spiritual way, I'm telling you that walking with Jesus every day has changed my life. I traded in my crazy jumping up and down cardio for a longer duration of cardio and walking with God. And it has, it's actually helped me lose more weight and gain more peace. And Mm. I just want to share, I feel like someone needs to hear this because you were talking about, we're talking about peace. And I feel like right now there's so much going on, you know, interest rates, politics, all of these things. But if we just sit at the father's feet and we pray, pray this scripture, Philippians four, six through seven, I'm sharing from the new King James version. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I think we need that so bad. We need to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, because quite honestly, we can go down a scroll hole of fear, or we can just sit at the feet of God and say, you already know it. You're the author and finisher Mm -hmm. of my faith. Like, I'm just going to enjoy my life, right? We enjoy our children, our grandchildren, uh, a beautiful walk with God, the day that he has made. You know, this is the day that he has made, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. So I feel like it's such a shift when we walk our lives out with God. It kind of gets to uh, when you're looking at some of the Psalms and you hear about these lament Psalms, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. what the person was doing is, I'm just, I'm giving it to God. I, I'm I'm venting. He, he can take it. I vent, but oh, then I also yes. trust, okay, God, after all I've said, you are the one in control. I trust and that's, you. That's so good. That so is, good. And and that remi- that brings me to number three. The yes. numbers only have the power you give them. Mm-hmm. You know, this world is going to try to define us. It's obsessed with age, weight. How many social media followers do you have? All this kind of stuff. But we need to remember that numbers are not our report card and that God defines us. And we need to take our power back and remember that his opinion is truly the only one that matters. That's right. And and again, you you mentioned a lot of numbers, weight, age. Social media likes, you name it, or zip test code. scores, zip codes, you know, the have... zip code, the clothing size. Uh-huh. I mean, the, I feel like that. I really believe that the enemy tortures us with numbers, especially. I don't know if men feel this as much as women do. Maybe your listeners can chime in. I feel like women. It starts as a teenager. You're tormented by this goal weight you have, or this mm-hmm. goal size, or. You know, maybe men are like, I need to make, and women, I need to make this money. I want to live on this zip code. Uh, You know, if if I only had this many followers or we're always looking at numbers, but truly if our identity is in Christ, we can have peace today. If some guys want to uh, comment on this, they can text in at 877-933-2484. I can talk for me. I mean, yeah, you. sometimes it is numbers, the income, or it's the rank, or at least your position within a company or... It can be a lot of things. It can be our age. Our age age, makes us feel. Yes, yes, there is that. Well, we're talking with Kim Dolan Leto, again, the author of Get Fit God's Way, as well as the podcast, uh, Strong, Confident, His podcast, which I think I want to point people to in a bit here because one of your more recent ones was really good. We'll talk about that hopefully before we're done, but we need to take a quick break. Thank you again for listening to Faith Radio. Receive a daily email featuring a scripture graphic. Sign up for the verse of the day email at myfaithradio.com. Well, again, you are made in God's image. You're His. It's what Kim Dolan Leto and I talked about just a few moments ago. Want to go deeper on that? Next week, the Set Apart Women's Conference happening at the University of Northwestern St. Paul. Lisa Harper will be giving one of the keynotes, as will Crystal Evans Hurst, helping you focus on your identity. You're being made in God's image. Now, there's both in person and online options. Learn more at setapartconference.com. I'm Paul, continuing to talk with Kim Dolan Leto. Another one of the lines, Kim, from the song for Mercy Me, Dear Younger Me. Dear Younger Me, it's not your fault. You were never meant to carry this beyond the cross. Ooh, as we think about sending a note back to our 10-year-old self, 
That one, I think, would probably be the most important message I could send myself about, again, we we all struggle with pains, mistakes, insecurities. We have them a lot when we're younger. And hopefully Mm -hmm. when we're older and with our walk with God, we've realized they really weren't, uh, they actually were good in our lives for a purpose. Talk about that. Yes. Okay. So the fourth one on this blog is your pain, mistakes, and insecurities are the road to Jesus. I think sometimes we can get stuck in a chapter of our story, but we need to realize it isn't the whole book because our journey with Jesus is often paved with broken pieces of our past, but we're not supposed to be ashamed of our scars. They are a beautiful testimony of God's grace. I want, I know someone needs to hear this. Your past does not define you, but let it refine you. It can refine you. And that's, I feel like we need to see that like, The obstacles are bridges. They're not the end. And like a diamond that's formed under pressure, so are we. So Mm -hmm. we're going to go through things, but we need to lean on him. And and I think this is sometimes in the Christian walk when we separate ourselves from God because we either feel unworthy, we feel like he couldn't, you know, possibly understand, but he is a loving father who knows you better than anyone else does. So lean on him and let your story be a beacon of hope for others because your healing is a testament to God's grace and someone else needs to hear what he has brought you through. I think so often, Paul, we hide things like my whole mission in doing fitness through God and the word of God is because I needed that answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did it all the world's way. And I made an idol out of fitness and it made me so insecure and it made me so shameful that I felt like I couldn't maintain these unrealistic numbers and look a certain way. But God said, I never called you to any of that. That is worldly and worldly means without me. So I took all of my failure and trial and error and point decided, okay, I need to tell people what God showed me. And he he put it on my heart to write the, the books that I have and have the podcast because we need such a different answer in fitness because I feel like it is such a place of shame. Like I used to be an overeater. I used to use food to numb me. Mm-hmm. I used to, you know, do all these things. And now I can look back and be like, wait, if I share that with someone who needed to hear it, it doesn't embarrass me because I know it is for God's glory because he saved me through it. So if people have mistakes right now that maybe God has brought them through in their past that they're hiding and someone else comes to you and says, oh, well, we're having a problem in our marriage and you and your husband went through something and now your marriage is fine. We need to share that. Mm -hmm. We need to share all the things that God has done because it brings him glory and it is fellowship. It makes another person feel like they're not alone and that they can get through it too. Hmm. Again, you're living out right there. For those who are struggling with, again, the fitness area, you mentioned somebody struggling in the marriage area. And if you've been one who God brought you through, and it's like with the comfort you have been comforted, you can comfort others. It, mm-hmm. You're getting back to that principle to Paul. And, and you also, when you were talking, I got thinking about, okay, you, people look at, well, Jesus never had any problems apart from that whole crucifixion thing. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> he was tempted in every way in which we are. He mm-hmm. went, as a matter of fact, he went through temptation to the nth degree and yet didn't sin. He knows the pain of it more than we ever did because he never gave in. But because mm-hmm. of that, and we're getting to the next thing here on your list, because he was faithful, he won the kingdom. God will promote you in his timing. Mm-hmm. Talk about that. I think, be okay, so we're talking about, you know, things we'd say to our younger self. Maybe yeah. you're starting to feel like, you're too old and it's too late or, you know, it's just not coming together. And the timing, it's like, you've been waiting forever for a breakthrough and you need an answer. Well, I, this is your message today to tell you to keep going because God is equipping you. Paul, I have to be honest with you. I wrote a quote one time that said, failure is training for who you're becoming. Hmm. And I just, because I just felt like at every turn, nothing was working, but we need to get in the fight. Like my question to our audience is, are you in the fight or have you quit? Like we need to get back in the fight for Jesus because he has work for us to do. If we're alive, he's not done with us. So I just want to encourage people to know that, yes, the path to your destination, may it may be harder than you think and take longer that you want, but it's going to be worth it because God is preparing you for what he's prepared for you. So stay strong and confident and stay rooted in his love 
Because one day you're going to look back and be like, wow, look at what God did. He did it. Like it happened and it is going to, but if you don't keep going, you're not going to see that. So we need to remember that God will promote us in his timing. God will deliver us in his timing. God will bring the breakthrough in his timing. And he's never early, but he's never late, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Kim, thank you for sharing a lot of these uh, thoughts you have. Again, the blog, you can find it at kimdolanleto.com. Uh, the the article is five things I would tell my younger self. There's one more thing I want you to quickly talk about. We have about a minute here. Um, you, you recently had a, on your podcast, uh, you were talking, I forgot what the name of the doctor was. I didn't write it down. But for those who have questions on a lot of health issues, you had kind of a wide ranging conversation about horm- things like hormonal weight gain, me- metabolic resistance, Ozempic, a lot of people talking about that rate lately. And you mm-hmm. and that doctor, what's the doctor's name again? It's my doctor. His name is Dr. Wozni. And we answered, I had, I, I asked a group of people all of their questions. We had like 90 questions and we spent an over an hour going through. He answered every question. So thyroid issues, cardiac issues, high cholesterol, like all of those issues. If you have something like that, look for Kim Dolan Leto on YouTube or my blog and you will see it, it says, you know, hormonal weight gain, Ozempic. you'll see that. And that podcast and video are an excellent resource for uh, understanding what is going on at these different stages and these different questions. Mm. I, I recommend it. I was I only got through about half of it, but it's like, wow, mm-hmm. your doctor knows a lot yeah. of good stuff there. So, so appreciate it. <laughs> yes. And he'll always try to treat you naturally before he does medicine. So there are options Mm-hmm. Like with thyroid and um, a lot of different things that maybe some people don't know that would really help them today. Yeah, sounds sounds good. Hey, Kim, thanks again for joining us here on Mornings with Carmen. And hopefully you and Carmen can have a nice conversation next month. Hey, and I just want to say you did a great job. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. <laughs> you are welcome, Kim. Blessings. Okay. God bless you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Well, Bye. anyway, thanks again for listening to Mornings with Carmen as we wrap up the show. Hey, how how did Jesus spend his final days here on earth, knowing the cross was coming? Why not join us this month, walking with Jesus through the final days of his earthly ministry? Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, where we'll be sharing as we walk with Jesus to the cross this month. I'm Paul. Thanks again for listening to Mornings with Carmen. Carmen back on Monday. It's been a great ser- great time serving you, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Mornings with Carmen LeBurge. Podcasts like this are available because of your support. If it's important to you to hear things that encourage your faith, click the link in the show notes to give now. And thanks.